Hi, good evening. Today I'm going to continue with uh, the concept of intertemporal choices, something that we have been doing for a while now and you know where we have done a lot of questions. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to introduce a new concept into intertemporal choices. And then you will see how I'm going to club the two concepts together. So I'm going to do something new with intertemporal choices today. And that is known as the altruism model. Now, you know, as part of our uh, last few lectures, we have gone ahead and talked about implicit utility function. What is an implicit utility function? An implicit utility function is any function where my utility function is not defined explicitly. And what do I mean that my utility function is not defined? Well, I mean that, you know, my utility function can be written something like this, x to the power alpha, y to the power beta. This is an explicit form of the utility function. But when I write my utility function like this, that it's a function of prices for individual A, and, you know, it's a function of prices for individual B, and prices of actually good x and good y. So here I can go ahead and say that this is x, this is y and m. And similarly, px, py and m. So, you know, when I do not define the function and I just say that it's some form, then I am actually talking about implicit utility function. So what I'll do today is I will continue with implicit utility function and I will introduce a new model around it and then I will club it with intertemporal choices. And you know, you will see how this is very much asked in DSC and ISI exam. So what I will do is I will go ahead and I will club this with intertemporal choice. Okay. Now, what is an altruism model? An altruism model is where, you know, you have at least one individual who is selfless or actually in other words, we have an individual whose utility is actually affected by consumption of others. Let's, for example, take the case of mothers. Now, you know, for a child, he may be selfish. But for a mother, he, she would be selfless. She would gain utility when the consumption of the child increases. So in that sense, we can say that mother has altruistic preferences. Whereas the child is having selfish preferences. Now, till today, whenever we define the utility functions, utility functions were defined as a function of two commodities, you know, consumption of good X and good Y, but utility functions always were defined such that your utility was only impacted by your demand, your consumption. Your utility was never getting impacted by the consumption of the other individual. Now let's go and see what this model has to offer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take two individuals, individual A and B. Now I'm going to assume that individual A is a selfish individual. He only gets utility by his own consumption. But individual B is a selfless individual. But more than that, he has altruistic preferences. 
he gets utility when the consumption of individual a increases right now this is the first thing secondly the income of individual a is given by m a and the income of individual b that is given by m b consumption of individual a is c a consumption of individual b is c b now we are going to go ahead and make certain basic assumptions the marginal utility is greater than 0 but we have diminishing marginal utility so the double differentiation of marginal utility is negative which means that you know as you consume a commodity the additional utility that you keep on getting although will be positive but will keep declining so from first to second the utility that i am getting that would be high from second to third the additional utility that i will get will be positive but lesser than the initial case so the marginal utility is negative uh change in marginal utility but marginal utility in itself is positive now what i'm also going to go ahead and assume that individual b because you know individual b is a selfless individual and he kind of gets more utility when a consumes more so individual b donates d amount to individual a right so you know he's donating some amount now you know let's just see if i have to write the budget line of individual a i'm going to first of all assume that the price is 1 you know this is done because i want to kind of uh, reduce the effect of the prices and i don't want to focus on the prices for now so <clears throat> whenever you know your aim is to kind of not focus too much on the prices you can go ahead and take it as a numerator price you can take the price as one as long as you take the price as one for both the individuals nothing is wrong with the model so you know p equal to 1 is just a simplification in the model now budget line for individual one is the price of the good into the units that he consumes so he consumed ca units right so i'm going to write ca and the consumption of individual a can be less than or equal to what his income but also he gets some level of donation from individual b so his new income or new wealth is the income that he earns plus the donation that he gets his consumption should be less than equal to this so this becomes the actually the budget set of individual a why set because i have a less than equal to sign i'm not putting an equal to sign directly now let's talk about individual b so if i talk about the budget line of individual b he is also going to consume certain amount but his consumption will be less than equal to his wealth now what is his income his income is mb but he is giving donation to individual a so minus d 
he has lesser income his income has been reduced by the amount of d so these are the two budget sets or equation of budget constraints of the two individuals let's just highlight these so you know i'm going to just remove uh, this one from here we know that this is one so this is the first budget constraint and this right here is the second budget constraint now let us talk about the utility function so you know in question any time that you would be solving this you would be given different forms of the utility function but for now for explanation i'm taking a general form and then in different questions of isi dsc iit i will show you what are the forms that they take so the utility function of individual a he is just impacted by his consumption but for individual b he is impacted by his consumption but he is also impacted by the consumption or the utility of individual a and i'm going to put an alpha here where i'm going to say alpha is greater than 0 now this alpha is nothing but my altruism factor what is altruism factor how much importance is b giving to the consumption of individual a one thing is that b is getting affected by the consumption of individual a but we also want to understand how much is he getting impacted so this alpha right here tells us that level of importance how important is it for individual b that how much individual a consumes this is the utility function of individual a now i have gone ahead and set the base of altruism now let's go ahead and see few of the questions related to it so the first question it says that write maximization problem of individual a and b 